in accordance with the open meeting law the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media please rise for the pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Sorry for the late start. We'll make it up, I promise. Uh, we'll start it out with uh, public comment. Anyone here for public comment? No? Okay. We'll go to the next agenda item, number five, to designate certain parks, recs, police matrons, crossing guides, COA van driver positions as special municipal employees. Mr. Goldberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, this is uh, an agenda item that comes to us by virtue of conversations with the Parks and Recreation Department as well as with uh, our understanding of some needs in the police uh, and Council on Aging, uh, Police Department and Council on Aging. And the board tonight is being asked to designate positions in the Parks and Recreation Department, largely or entirely part time positions. Um, that are specific in nature, as well as the police matron and crossing guard positions, the council on van, council on aging van driver, which is shared by two part-time employees, as special municipal employees. And the reason for this is because we found that despite our advertising of the positions, uh, our <coughs> continuous <laughs> advertising of the positions, in some cases we've, some cases we've had difficulty uh, recruiting employees for the position. And we have found that uh, on multiple, on, on occasion, the candidates that come to, uh, come to us are already employed in other part-time capacities working for the town. Uh, under state law, a municipal employee cannot hold two part-time positions without one of those positions being designated as a special municipal employee. And therefore, we've come forward here with a recommendation that the board vote to designate the Parks and Recreation infant toddler instructor, after school instructor and coach, summer program instructor and coach, summer program director, summer, pro summer program assistant director, and summer counselor position, as well as the police matron and crossing guard, and council on aging van driver positions as special municipal employees. And we included in the packet this listing as well as a motion and uh, information around the conflict of interest law as well as a ba an opinion from town council. The reason it's come up is because there's a seasonal, uh, I shouldn't say seasonal, there is a hire that's pending right now relative to a candidate for uh, infant and toddler instructor, which as I understand is a vacancy made, a vacancy caused by the appointment of the former person to a full-time position in the Parks and Recreation Department. And then the Parks and Recreation Department would like to hire a candidate who is uh, otherwise employed by the town in a part-time capacity in another department, but cannot do so legally without the position pending being designated as a special municipal employee. Okay. Any board members have any questions? Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, it's not so much a question because I understand how the statute works. It's just more of a concern because it, in my understanding is, you know, it's the position that's um, designated, not the individual. Um, and generally, <clears throat> in the past and we've been very uh, cautious to designate positions as special employees uh, so I in doing so I would, I would if we're going to act favorably on this recommendation proposal is that um, the board revisit any designated positions on an annual basis you know maybe we should do it I don't care if we do it in June or we do it in uh, December uh, just to keep it in the forefront and again it's more of an administrative matter whereby you know it gets into our tickler file that you know whether it be with reappointments mm -hmm. or an annual time frame uh, we look at it whether it be on a fiscal standpoint fiscal year or during our regular <coughs> regular budgetary session you know time frame with you know, regular appointments in December that whatever positions we have designated be either reaffirmed or reevaluated annually and again, maybe we need a, a policy uh, change also from the board standpoint, but I think administratively it can be handled. And if we have the need now, then that's fine. But uh, I think it's important that we uh, keep it in the forefront and keep it uh, very visible uh, so that we don't fall into some sort of uh, uh, trap later on, shall we say. 
uh, with specific positions being so designated. So again, it's, it's not for the individual, it's for the position itself. So I think it's something that if we're going to do it, and again, we haven't, very often we haven't done it in the past, I think we need to uh, visit it every year. And just to add to that too, four of these are for summer, for a summer um, program <coughs> position. So there certainly isn't a need to do that right now because the summer's over and school's in session. And um, I think there needs to be some more parameters around it. For example, if it's the Council on Aging van driver, so that there's a specific daytime, obviously, or I guess hours within which that van driver is designated to work. So what other position would that van driver be filling that we've given them designated status as a special employee? Or is it someone else that's currently employed that's going to be serving as a van driver? Do, do, is, that, is that how it's going to work? So I, I guess I would defer to the, the recreation director relative to the summer positions. Yeah, so I don't necessarily need them approved tonight, but if I had to wait till April, to say, when you met again, I, I start my hiring in January for the summer. I start interviewing, I start advertising in January, because I obviously have to have summer directors and summer staff hired, trained, um, first aid CPR training. Um, by March, I have it done, um, so that I'm fully set up to advertise and run the program. So I can't wait till the summer. I'd be in a lot of trouble if I wait till the summer. Um, I hire a lot of teachers in the summer. It makes sense. They're out in the summer. They're qualified. I hire coaches that are coaches for the schools. They're qualified. They're ready to work. So, um, I mean, to me, if you had to review them each year, December would be fantastic because that would give me plenty of time to do my summer hiring. Um, if we waited till the summer, I, I would be really stuck between a rock and a hard place trying to find people after they've got approved, you know, say in June or in April town meeting or whatever. Uh, I think I'd be more comfortable doing it during the budget cycle myself, to be honest with you. You got to come here before us to present. You should include this in your budget. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we should have a note to make sure that when we go and approve the budgets, we specifically have a, a motion every year around the budget season that approves these positions. We shouldn't approve the money if we're not going to do the position. And I think we should take that action first, then approve the money associated with it. Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, yeah, just in relation to the budget, uh, and I know we, we start budgeting reviews as soon as the money's starting to be spent. but. Yeah, but my guess is uh, we should probably do it with these summer. We do re annual appointments or reappointments uh, because sometimes we may not hear the recreation budget until February, or April, or March, excuse me, yep. uh, before the April town meeting. So my, my suggestion would be do it with the regular appointments and reappointments in December um, time frame as far as those positions. Mm -hmm. And then from a budgetary standpoint, we're going to get the justification anyway as far as what the cost associated with the part-time position is. <laughs> Uh, and my guess is it's not going to be significantly different whether they're special employee status or not. Correct? Correct. Yeah. So, uh, again, I'm just more concerned with, with the positions being designated as special employees, which yep. gives the position a little extra uh, consideration for dual employment than I am the dollar amount, because I think the dollar amount for the positions are the same regardless of whether they are. They, they wouldn't change at they all. They wouldn't change much whether they're in-house or, yep. or out-of-house. Yep. So my, my guess is if we, if we do it on a, an annual basis with our regular appointments and reappointments to boards, committees, and commissions, it will probably be most appropriate. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. I think that's a reasonable suggestion. Yes. And specifically, I think the town administrator mentioned that I do have a person right now that I'm waiting to hire that is a part-time substitute in the schools that I also want to hire as an instructor for me seasonally, um, to hopefully to work throughout the school year this whole year. but. I take one season at a time, we'll see how it lasts, but um, I would like to really offer a position over the next week, so it is something that I have on the board right now that I need approval for. And again, she just holds part-time substitute teacher through the school system, and this is a part-time seasonal position with me. Mrs. Minipelli. Which, which one? Um, That's the infant toddler instructor. And, and so actually, too, then these other summer that you're going to actually advertise these so anyone could apply for these. So they really, we don't really know the need at this point as to whether you need some sort of designation. You're exactly right, except for that. The after school program. That, the after uh, school, other than that. The after school teacher know. coach, I'm also looking for one right now, so that could apply right now. That is an open position that's advertised right now. Um, and the summer, the summer ones, you're right, but I can, I can assure you that we, I always do hire. I have hired previously. Um, 
um, you know, the high school soccer coach, uh, track coach, the high school uh, volleyball coach, and they, they have one camps for me every summer. So I do plan on hiring those types of positions back again this year under this ruling. Previously, um, they had handled it differently. They had a sign a waiver saying they disclosed what they did, and that was how the understanding of it was. It had to be done, and we did that through the um, town clerk's office, but now Bob has brought this to my attention in HR that we need to do it differently, so. So, Mr. O'Leary, go ahead. No, I, so, uh, to me, I, I think the, the list of uh, positions that we have before us are pretty encompassing. Uh, some of them may be some incumbents currently need the status in order to continue. Um, there appears to be a situation, some situations where potentially these other ones, so I, I'm okay with, with going with a litany of positions now yep. and then revisiting it a year from December. Yeah. So 15 I mean, months from now we could address it. You know, to, and then just do it on the annual basis. You know, we can do it again in December also, just to reaffirm. So I was going to uh, ask, so I understand the two in your area, the one van driver for the counseling agent. What about the crossing guards? Do we need them, or are we okay? I, I don't. I believe we have a need for the positions, but I don't believe we have any candidates who would fall in this category right now. But we do have. Okay, so we have a need. So. Okay, all right. Well, then it makes sense to me to do them all now, but we have to revisit them again. Well, we can revisit them again in December, and then we can do then they get okay. on an annual. I would like to do that because I'd like to just get on that routine. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kate. I just want to say one more thing in terms of this. I think if, if it's advertised and, and it's fully put out there, that just because we do this doesn't avoid the issue of someone maybe having a leg up on someone else who's applying and other citizens who are applying just because they're in here and they're known. Yeah, no. I'm not saying that's what no, you're no. doing. But no, I advertise fully. For yes, <laughs> yeah. And as we've spoken before, and I think as Human Resources told you, I advertise my heart out and I maybe get one applicant for these jobs. They're not very easy jobs to fill. They're all very seasonal and very part-time. So if I find qualified people that are willing just to work, you know, an hour a day or a, a six-week interim in the summer, it's not a very easy thing to do. So for a director, I might get one or two applicants a year. I advertise my heart out on these jobs and I use every resource I can. And even then, I only get a couple applicants. But 90% of the time, they will fall into a position where they they might not work for the North Reading school systems, but it, it, it is general that I get mostly teachers in. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go through the motion this evening. We'll readdress it in December, which will give sure. us more exposure. Mm -hmm. So we'll get some exposure from this evening's meeting. We'll get some more exposure for you in December to reiterate to the town, to the local communities that may be listening and watching to try to get more applicants as well. Okay. Take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to des designate the following positions as having special municipal employee status pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 268A in Parks and Recreation, Infant Toddler Instructor, After School Instructor Coach, Summer Program Instructor Coach, Summer Program Director, Summer Program Assistant Director, Summer Counselor for Police, the Matron, and the Crossing Guard, and for Council on Aging, the Van Driver. I have a so second. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 One absence. Okay. We have about five minutes. I'm not sure we can do the intermunicipal agreement with Andover and portable water and the wastewater update, but I I'll leave it up to you. Mr. Chairman, through you, I believe we can do at least one of them, which is number six relative to the intermunicipal agreement with Andover for portable water. Okay. Um, our, my understanding is that the Andover Water Selectman will be considering uh, the extension of the existing intermunicipal agreement at their meeting this evening mm -hmm. with the goal of providing us a document for uh, our review uh, and approval um, no later than the October 2nd uh, town meeting. Um, I was hoping that we would have a draft of the document in hand right now. I do not have a draft of the document at this point in time, but I'm sure that I'll receive something shortly. It should be fairly straightforward based on the terms we've discussed on the existing uh, intermunicipal agreement being extended, um, but you know, we'll, we'll see when the language comes along. And if you would like, I'll try to keep going through the number I just seven. Question, quick question for Mr. O'Leary, if I could. So, Mr. O'Leary, during your discussion since the last time we met, any, do you see anything changing on that? 
No, I, what Mr. Mosseri and I and Mr. Gilberto asked uh, the Town of Andover to do is to basically uh, extend the intermunicipal agreement, not necessarily incorporating the terms and conditions which they have offered us for a long-term agreement. So basically the uh, two one-year extensions. And that's what we're anticipating they're going to be voting on this evening. Okay. Uh, they were asking if they, they, they should include uh, those terms and conditions um, as a basis for beginning for negotiations with us. We told them we didn't think that was necessary or warranted or desired. What we're looking for was a, an extension to the current intermunicipal agreement, which would provide us the opportunity to uh, review their proposal for an extended period of time. Again, we've set up April 30th for ourselves. Uh, to take a look at uh, the proposal, and then in the meantime, we will continue to negotiate uh, terms and conditions for a long-term agreement, separate from the intermunicipal extension, agreement extension. So we're anticipating tonight they're gonna be voting on the extension only, which is the two one years, which was proposed yep. in that whole summary of terms that they offered. And uh, as Mr. Gilberto pointed out, we expect to see something later on this evening from them or tomorrow morning. And okay. we have another meeting set up with them Shortly, Very good. we continue to meet. Okay. Mr. Minjapel, you have it? You're good? Mr. Masseri, you all set on this? Yeah, I think Steve covered. Very good. Yeah. Michael, go ahead. You have about three minutes. Sure. So related uh, number six on the agenda tonight, rel number seven, excuse me, relative to water and wastewater. So as was discussed at the two meetings in August, September, and September relative to uh, the uh, uh, proposal from Andover, we will be requesting funding at the October town meeting as an article in the warrant for our continued uh, evaluation of the um, water and wastewater alternatives, including uh, and with a close look at Andover. Uh, and the goal we've been discussing, as was in accordance with the board's vote, is to conclude that evaluation so that a final decision may be made as to which of the paths, Andover or the MWRA, that we're going to pursue that a final decision would be made on that in no later than April of this uh, coming year, April of 2018. Uh, related to that, we are working through the Department of Public Works and our consultant to meet with the appropriate permitting authority to better understand their expectations relative to the permitting associated with all of the options that are on the table, including the permitting process that we're already in. And we're hopeful that we'll be able to meet with them as soon as the beginning part of next week, if I, my, my recollection is correct. Um, the impact that that has is on us right now is we have a projection that's been provided to us by our consultants for a cost associated with that study. That cost was $325,000, and that's the midpoint of the range that they provided us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, depending upon the outcome of, of that meeting with the permitting officials in Boston, there may be a, a, de a determination that it's more advantageous to request a different amount, either more or less, depending upon where we're at, and that's something that would need to be further vetted at the October 2nd board meeting immediately preceding the October town meeting. So how does this impact our DEIR schedule? So that's part of the, the conversation that we, we need to have with them relative to our ability to, uh, what, to what their recommendations might be relative to handling that. Right now we are still within the uh, permitting process uh, leading up to an FEIR being filed. That would be the next benchmark for the MWRA right. process. Um, I think our goal and our desire, desire would be to continue to leave uh, that uh, suspended permitting ap activity rather than a terminated permitting activity, but that's something we need to discuss uh, w with them relative okay. to the timelines. I'll get an update on that. All right. Any questions? Well, Mr. Masseri? Just uh, a comment that uh, Steve and I will present a report at the October town meeting just to bring the town up to date on both paths that we're on. Okay. And Mr. Sarah or Larry, have you been able to reach the moderator just no, to make I'm them aware? I'm committed to do that. I will reach out to them. Once we get a little more definitive in relation to uh, the discussions with the permitting agencies and what we're going to be doing, I'll reach out to the moderator and uh, inform okay. him that we'll probably want to talk about all those articles yeah. at the same time. Because we're going to need more than five minutes. Yes. <laughs> all at the same time, make the presentation, and then just take them up. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll have that discussion with the moderator. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I think that's perfect in the timing. Um, I have a public hearing notice. <coughs> God bless you. Bless you. Mr. Gilberto, I'm going to, uh, if it's okay with you, I'll read the public notice while you're Thank you. getting that up and running. 
see how blind I'm getting, how far away I have to put it now. Notice of informational hearings. The North Reading Board of Selectmen does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that hearings on the four following articles contained in October 2nd, 2017, town meeting warrant will be held Monday, September 18, 2017, 8 p.m., Room 14, Town Hall. Article 1, hear and act on reports of town offices and committees. Article 2, prior year bills. Article 3, transfer from Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. Article 4, appropriate money to Stabilization Fund. Article 5, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Article 6, amend FY 2018 operating budget. Article 7, fund repairs to town buildings. Article 8, fund town facilities master plan. Article 9, appropriate supplement supplemental funds for JT Berry Lowell Road property. Article 10, appropriate funds for study and design water slash wastewater connection. Article 11, authorize intermunicipal <coughs> agreement with town of Andover in home rule petition for portable water. Article 12, fund construction of pump station, Reading and North Reading water system improvements for MWRA water interconnection and acceptance of water for MWRA. Article 13, authorize intermunicipal agreement with the town of Reading in the home rule petition for portable water. Article 14, authorize Article 97 legislation for portable water interconnection with town of Reading. Article 15, amend code general bylaws social host responsibilities. Article 16, amend code general bylaws betterment assessments. Article 17, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Article 18, sale of land, 8 Devons Road, map 42, parcel 71. Article 19, acquire property for public portable water main, 100 Lowell Road, map 14, parcel 9. These hearings are held pursuant to Section 23B of Chapter 39 of the Massachusetts General Code, Open to a Meeting Law, General Laws, the Open Meeting Law. Any interest citizen is welcome to attend, participate in the hearing. Notice of explanation. It is the unanimous desire of the North Reading Board of Selectmen to encourage and allow the highest level of public participation in making de de decisions that affect North Reading. It is our belief that these informational hearings will foster and enable more participation in town government by its citizens. The hearings will be also allow the board to make informed and considered recommendations to the town meeting. We sincerely hope that you will join us for these hearings and attend the town meeting on October 2nd, 2017. Board of Selectmen. Mr. Gabarro, I don't, we don't have a motion, but I don't know if we need one to actually enter into the hearing. Nope. Just no, the no I believe we read the hearing notice right. and then we proceed. Right. And That's what I was wondering. Okay. And there are motions in the packet separately relative to the recommendations for those for which recommendations have not yet been made. I don't know if the board wishes to do those along the way or wishes yes. to do them afterwards. Yeah, I have some, um, you know, I've kind of went through this with 19 articles. That's about almost four per person. But I was trying to look at this this afternoon and certain board members, certain board members have been working on certain articles. So I've tried to divide it up equally. So I'll make some recommendations. If any board member has an objection to what I've come up with, you can let me know. So we'll start with Article 1, and uh, I'll let you know. Certainly. So Article 1, the standard article to hear and act on reports of town offices and committees. <coughs> we anticipate hearing reports from the following committees, the Economic Development Committee, the Athletic Facilities Committee relative to the uh, construction project for the restroom and concession facility at Arthur Kenny Field, and the Recycling Committee. This is a summary of available funds. So you'll note that uh, we have uh, some $6,448,570.20 available across 
all uh, funding sources. But you'll also note that we do not have included in that number the certified free cash available as of June 30th, 2017. We expect, we, we expect to have that number any day now and certainly we'll have it before October town meeting. The same is true for water retained earnings, which will be certified in the coming days. We've identified funding sources for the articles here in a summary fashion. I can speak uh, more directly about them on an article by article basis. Uh, that, uh, uh, that might be more helpful. Make a motion on Article 2. We already recommended Article 1, but... No, I haven't got to Article 2 yet. I'm sorry. We, we, haven't, we haven't decided we haven't made a, on Yeah, we haven't two made a decision yet. on 2. Because we didn't know the amount of... Sure. So, our Article 2, uh, moving along in the presentation, is a transfer of $9,475 from the DPW and employee benefits in fiscal year 18 in order to pay years of a prior... Uh, bills of a prior year. And, um, <coughs> The finance director, I believe, can elaborate as to what the expenses were. We have two um, invoices. One is for the Department of Public Works, and the other um, is for um, public safety, disability um, invoice that came in after the fiscal year was closed. Um, and this is what they totaled combined, 9475 However, there could be possibly one more, um, but right now these are the only ones that have been received by the finance office. So we'll continue to hold off our recommendation until town meeting floor, right? Sounds good. Which is the way we so, voted. Okay. Miss yep, that's the way we voted. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend a town meeting article to prior year bills. Second. Which is redundant, well, but that's okay. Yeah. No, no, we've already, I think we've already yeah. taken that action. I don't think we necessarily have, need a motion. The Let's only see. motion we would need Let's to you want to reaffirm, something. right? Uh, yeah, if, if that's already taken, we so can we take it. we already did that. I'm right. sorry. No, don't be sorry. We've already but recommended I, a town meeting, so. You yep. have. I, sometimes the board elects to modify its recommendation based on further yeah, information. Yeah, we're going to change our recommendation. But if there's, yeah. no, but if there's going to be no change, potentially we'll something else okay. coming up, then we should wait. We should wait. So I'll withdraw my second. Mr. 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 Chairman, if this is a public hearing, right, should we not go through each article one at a time? Yeah, we are. That's what we're doing. Did we skip one? Uh, we already made a recommendation on one. We, Michael went through it. We no, had already voted. Do we ask anyone if they have any questions? or? I will make sure I ask. Okay. If you, As we go along, I would assume that it was pretty clear. If we come across an article, anybody here would like a have a question just come right to the podium and I will recognize you just give me your name and your address please continue on article 2 or 3 now article 3 a transfer of funds to the capital improvement stabilization fund the balance is just over 1.1 million dollars the article at this point contemplates adding two hundred thousand dollars from certified free cash for fiscal year 2018 the capital plan to increase the fund balance to just over 1.3 million dollars And the, the board's previous action was to recommend a town meeting. Again, where we are awaiting the certification of free cash, the board may wish to withhold its further action until free cash is certified. Mr. Mayor, do you have a question? Any comments, questions? Okay, next. Article 4 would be, uh, it's a routine article that we keep on the warrant for transfer into the rainy, rainy day fund. The current balance is $2.259 million. Right now we do not have a plan for a transfer in. Uh, we'll make a final recommendation, however, uh, prior to town meeting once available funds are certified. Just, when was the last time we made a uh, transfer in? Last October town meeting. Was, was it $500,000? $200,000. 200000 okay. I round up. I was thinking <laughs> round up. <laughs> Any more questions? Anyone else? Okay. 
Next. Michael, were you going to assign as we went? We, that is the, uh, we'll do that at the end. Okay. We'll go back. All right, fine. It's an agenda, as a separate agenda audit outside mm -hmm. the hearing, Bob. Article 5, again, standard article relative to funding our old other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. The present balance approaching $900,000, and it's a balance accrued in a fairly short period of time due to the aggressive funding that we do at the June town meeting. We don't traditionally fund this article at the October town meeting. We're not recommending a funding of funding this article at the October town meeting at this time. We'll make a final recommendation once uh, the totality of available funds is certified. And our last transfer in was at the June town meeting in the amount of three hundred thousand dollars. Correct. No, it's, uh, that must be with the discrepancies. Yeah. It's a different fund balance in the warrant that was printed. Right. Hmm. So it's 1.142547 1 1 1 in the warrant. Okay. Is that so the correct? I can explain that. Um, I'm not sure um, where that probably was the previous fund balance. So at June town meeting, we um, put 200 and. 50,000 um, that was remaining in the health insurance budget into the OPEB trust. We then transferred that those funds out <clears throat> and then we put 300,000 in as part of the FY18 uh, revenue plan. Mm -hmm. So that is what brings it to the 892. Okay, so, so the 250 <coughs> wasn't netted out. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Too bad. We just have some explaining to do at town meeting. So just make sure we're prepared to explain that. Okay, any qu more questions on that? And we'll just wait for Tom Mina to make the recommendation. Yeah, that would be my recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay, next. Article 6, relative to amending the fiscal year 2018 operating budget. There are four particular areas that we are looking at right now for uh, amendment, and I'll ask the finance director to speak to the dollar amounts on each, and I'll give a brief description of the subject matter. First is uh, we're all familiar of the activities required relative to Martin's Pond. Uh, it includes uh, both the uh, testing uh, at, uh, uh, at the location, which we were required to do three times, as well as uh, signage, rental of signed boards, and uh, other expenses associated with it. That's the first area, which will be transferred into the Department of Public Works budget. And uh, if you could speak to the dollar amount. Um, for Martin's Pond testing, DPW has spent approximately $5,000. <coughs> that includes a roughly $3,000 worth of testing expenses and a balance for the uh, rental of signage and, post and construction of posting of signage. The second area is a Board of Health uh, refrigerator. Uh, the Board of Health has been advised that uh, in order to store uh, seasonal flu vaccine uh, on premises that it must have a particular piece of equipment manufactured to a particular standard which uh, has a particular cost associated with it uh, that we're proposing to transfer funds into their budget at the October town meeting in order that that equipment might be procured. The potential cost for this um, refrigerator is between $1,500 and $7,000. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> The range, the potential cost is fifteen hundred to seven thousand dollars. So the department will be. So we're waiting for something to go on sale. I guess yeah. Just going <laughs> off of the information that I received. Are we going to have? Yes. I looked to the town administrator for that. Yes. Yes. So they're in the process of getting of identifying a, a, fi a, a final cost, but this is to make the board aware that this is something that's pending, that was not anticipated even two weeks ago in our last discussion. And we'll have a dollar amount at the October town meeting. Where's it going to be housed? So my understanding is the intention is to house it here in the, the Board of Health, um, in, uh, in most likely in the larger of the uh, two offices that they have. That's my understanding. Or in here in the back corner. Spits <laughs> <laughs> a fridge. I, I, what kind of a refrigerator is it? I can provide the board a more detailed it's report. Uh, it, but it, there, is, the there is a minimum criteria that the yeah. State Department of Public Health requires for the equipment. And we will encourage them to look more towards the $1,500 model than the $7,000 uh, model. No, whatever works. But <laughs> Continue. The third area is... Uh, Excuse me. Here. We don't have one now, or do we? 
I, I believe we do have a fridge now, but I do not believe it meets the standard required by the Department of Public Health. It, my understanding is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. The third uh, budget amendment is relative to the assistant building superintendent. Uh, it's a position that we created two years ago, but filled approximately one year ago. And uh, over time, based upon the uh, structure of other positions within other divisions of the Department of Public Works, the department has stepped forward with regard with human resources and recommended an uh, adjustment to the compensation uh, in the position. The position has been filled. It is filled right now by a contract uh, an individual employment contract employee, and I'd ask the finance director just to speak to the dollar amount. The dollar amount that is necessary to, uh, to increase this um, position would be $2,800. And the fourth pending area that we are looking at right now is relative to amending the table of organization to create a Department of Public Works Operations Director position, and this is something that's come out of a recommendation from the department head in order to make additional modifications to the administrative structure of the department. We do not have a dollar amount fixed with it right now. It would be funded out of the salary pool after further consultation with the board and then after further uh, analysis is conducted, but we felt it was appropriate to identify that this is a position that we would be looking to, uh, uh, to uh, add to the Department of Public Works um, table of organization. We do expect that as a result of doing that, we would be eliminating another position within the table of organization uh, as well, or at least not filling that position so that there would be no net increase. But we do expect that there would in all likelihood be a, an uh, increase in the, um, the hourly wage for the position that we're looking to create. Just earlier. Are we going to be getting a presentation on this as far as what the position will we contemplate the position maybe i missed it yes okay so i didn't miss it you did not miss, you it. Did not miss it i didn't miss it you did no. not miss it and we waited for you oh thank you <laughs> yeah all right so so this is a, a full-time equivalent is going to remain the same but we're looking to increase job responsibilities another position that's correct and this would be in what area of the DPW I guess other than operations you know yeah it would be charged with oversight for uh, across the divisions excluding uh, buildings and grounds and yeah. okay I guess, and I guess the timing of this in relation to not having any for discussion about it yet the need is immediate or uh, I would say that uh, obviously because th it's being proposed but th there's an increasing need with regard to it um, yes well, well I, I guess I just haven't been privy to and maybe other members yeah. have been but I have not no I have I no are you okay. yeah. Huh? I haven't either. Okay, I, and again, I, I I don't. So we're not we're not requesting a approval from the board tonight, as right. I mentioned, because we're looking to finalize some no, but recommendations. You're out in a couple of weeks, so we yeah. are, and well. I think our I, I'll speak for myself, but after discussion with the chairman, the intention was to brief the board, uh, insofar as this may have an impact on collective bargaining strategy discussions, which will start tomorrow. So we need to have a discussion tonight. But I will remind the board that we have a lot of acting positions, the general foreman, the cemetery, the highway, uh, water, and the parks positions are all acting today. Well, the, the individuals in there are in acting capacity, but the positions are permanent positions. Permanent. But to become, to get them out of the acting, we need to get this sort of figured out so everything else can. Okay, uh, I, I, again, this is just something that's, that's come up and uh, other than New today. 15 minutes ago, yeah, New no, today. excuse me, five minutes ago, yep. uh, unaware. Yep. You will go home, you will be well aware before you go home this evening. Okay. And then I think there's one more thing missing, unless you're not, are you all set with that one? Everything, there's one thing missing? We talked was, about time was, cards. Was there a dollar amount? Oh, no. There is no dollar amount yet? Not, not at this yet. time, no. Okay. Time card system. Do we want to address that under the FY? 
18. Yeah, so I believe that we have that addressed through the budget already. That was more of a strategic planning area, if I recall, okay. recall correctly. So we already have the funding on it? I believe so, yes. I looked at the finance director, but I believe we took care of that in June time meeting. Are we referring to the time clock within the Department of Public Works, or are we reviewing, referring to town-wide time town, sheets? Town, town-wide. So we need to look into that, and the town administrator mentioned FY19 for that, um, and we potentially would do that through Munis, and we could um, have that available to us at this time. We would just need money for implementation. And when we get to the strategic plan this evening, I'll I'll talk more about that. That's my confusion on. I just want to make sure that we weren't going to capture anything here. Okay. It, it wasn't our intention, at least. We were okay. intending, I think, to make a uh, request as part of the FY19 budget process. Anybody else? Any questions on Article Six? Okay. Continue. Article Seven. Funding repairs to town buildings. This is a, an article that we've done annually in the amount of $50,000. Um, we have um, four projects identified here. Um, we're repairing the entrance, priming, and painting the front of the building at the senior center. Uh, an upgrade to security cameras and repairs to the security camera system at the police department. Fire protection, security alarm upgrades, and roof repair at the Department of Public Works complex and replacement of the floor of the elevator at the public library. And again, these are for projects that do not exceed the threshold of $25,000 for capital improvement and are funded uh, outside of the operating budgets. Any questions from the audience? Board members? Okay. The, uh, just yep. as far as the senior center, the sign at the senior center is faded and deteriorating, is that included or not? Uh, I would look to the Department of Public Works Director. Uh, not as part of this, no. Is that going to be under CIP? I'm sorry? Is it no, a it's CIP? a small, the small dollar amount. Well, then I'm it. not sure why we didn't have it here then. <clears throat> I'm just asking. No, I, I thought Maybe it was it's back on the radar. Okay. I would assume. I think it, as well as a sign at the Flint Memorial Library are both in need of attention. The sign at the Flint Library is also in need of similar attention. Maybe that's something we can look at. Okay. I expected it that it was going to be here, too. Okay. Continue. Next article. Well, bless you, Phil. Does the board wish to make a recommendation relative to this article? We already did. We did. Oh, you did. Excuse me. <laughs> We're not looking to change it. <laughs> Article 8, relative to funding the Town Facilities Master Plan. This is something that I noted at the last uh, meeting was an order of magnitude uh, of approximately $150,000. Further evaluation of the scope and in, in order to include the close evaluation of the Town Hall and the fire station, the total projected amount to procure the entire contract would be $200,000. So it's a change. Again, we've been refining the scope as we've moved along, but we want to make sure we have the appropriate dollar amount identified here. Um, it's um, something that continues to evolve and will be subject to procurement, but we believe that that's a more um, tolerable number in terms of being able to achieve the, the goal that was outlined at the last discussion. Mr. Masseri. What's the source of funds? Free cash. Yes. Free cash. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend two hundred thousand dollars. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None being heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. One absent. Article nine. Just so you're, I think it was one fifty printed in the water. That we already that's, that's as an explanation. Yeah. It wasn't in the yeah. warrant article, so I don't believe we're not it. limited to the. It wasn't in the warrant. We but should. We did, that was the number we used when we made the first recommendation. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Since then, yeah. the town administrator had new information, updated information okay. that required an additional fifty thousand dollar request. Okay. okay. Right. Article nine. Unless anyone else has questions, Article nine. Supplemental funds for the J.T. Berry Lowell Road property. 
again at this time we are not anticipating a request for funding uh, to be to be made so I, I wouldn't recommend any further action I think the board can take any final action in the evening of town meeting I mean I think we should recommend to pass over I'd suggest doing so on the evening of town meeting just to keep our options available oh, you no. know how, I, how conservative I can be with regard to it just all right case. that's fine but we do not expect a funding request especially given the support of the Finance Committee okay any questions just right to the podium, please, if you don't mind. George Longo, 18 Ridge Bay Road. Um, I'm not up to date on what's happening with that J.T. Berry property. I wonder what the town is looking at. How the the pro I don't know if this is the appropriate place to raise or ask the question, but um, what is the plan for its use? What are we? Uh, or sure. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm happy to do you. Mr. Chairman, through you. So the, the property that, that the town has gone through a procurement process right. in order to seek proposals for the reuse of the property. Uh, we, we received a proposal that was uh, recommended or selected by the Board of Selectmen upon the recommendation of the Economic Development Committee to construct 450 units of age restricted 55 plus. Um, townhouses so that's still the current plan that's correct yes Oh, okay this article um, would basically allow us to fund any costs associated with the closing of the sale of the property most of those costs will actually end up being um, partially reimbursed out of the actually fully reimbursed fully. out of the operating uh, out of the proceeds from the sale that we split with the state okay uh, but we're not expecting to need any additional funding at this point in time okay thank you we're just putting in there just in case Any other questions? Please continue to Article 10. Thank you. Article 10, so this would be to fund a study and design for the water and wastewater connection um, to evaluate the alternatives, including but not limited to the town of Andover as a follow-up to the board's two discussions relative to water and wastewater. I said see additional slides in here, and we intend to incorporate the longer presentation that was made at the two previous board meetings. For, the, for purposes of brevity, I haven't put them in here. Effectively, the funding source um, here would be um, um, borrowing through the water enterprise uh, and we expect the amount to be $325,000 with the one caveat that we'll be meeting with the permitting authorities and if their recommendation changes that then we'll, we'll bring that back to the board for potential change but we do not have a change to the number at this point in time you're going to use enterprise funds that's our plan yes 325 okay okay not all, not all. Hmm. No. Not all enterprise. Not all enterprise. Oh, because of the wastewater, right. Okay. So the finance director is reminding me that a portion of it is wastewater funded. will not be funded in that fashion. It will be funded out of either borrowing or uh, out of a balance of free cash. Okay. What the, what the allocation of that is, we don't know right now. We're, we're, we're looking to get that from our consultants. And again, this is something that's been developing over the past three weeks and that's continues fine. to develop in the next week. That was going to be my next question, how we're doing the wastewater piece from this enterprise fund. That's Thank great. you. You can let Please. us know by town <laughs> meeting. Yes, Mr. Masseri. I think we should, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, change our recommended to make a recommendation at town meeting. Since originally we thought it was all being put on the water enterprise. Oh, I don't think we ever, I, I was surprised when the town administrator said that because I've never heard that we're going to pay the full amount through the enterprise. The wastewater piece, we've always talked about paying it through other sources. Well, I'd ask what's the source of funds? Which they're going to make the recommendation to us prior to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Depending upon the allocation of the dollar amount, we'll have a recommendation. If it's a I, Either way, amount. we're going to be in favor of the $325,000 over it's going to be. Right. Funded, but uh, just for disclosure purposes and transparency, it's $325,000 that we're going to have to come up with to right. evaluate the Andover proposal. I would assume a significant portion of it will be handled through the Enterprise Fund, and then, I mean, I don't, have, I don't think you have a slide tonight to break out the $325,000. No, we, don't have, we just don't have that number so, available to us right now. But I, I believe the board's still in 
full favor, Mr. Messier, you have some objection to the recommendation that we've made previously? No, I don't have a recommendation. I'm just making the point that we don't have the full breakdown of that yeah, that expenditure, system. nor do we have the secondary source of for funding. That's okay. All. Well, we get some. We'll hopefully have that information. Isn't that, I doubt if it's but there's a motion. recommendation. Yeah, 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 and I think we've already, this is already been printed in the warrant as far as recommending, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. So. All right. I'll Assume. back off. Yeah. You're going to withdraw your motion. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'll Any assume that we'll have that information at our Please. meeting prior, prior Yes, to we hope to have it yeah. the early to mid part of next week. Okay. Pertaining to the wastewater, um, I went to the meeting that you had at the high school a while back with um, the town of Reading, and um, there was some discussion on the wastewater connection. I'm just wondering if the plan with Andover is going to, if the wastewater plan is going to essentially be the same, whether it's with Andover or with Reading in terms of what gets tied into it. Um, I believe at the meeting earlier there was some talk about um, Route 28 tie-ins and I don't and maybe Martin's Pond, and I'm not sure if Concord Road was going to tie into that as well. But it was at that meeting it was stated that in terms of typical residents being tied in, that is something that is not being looked at and if it does get looked at it's way in the future i just kind of wondering what what if there it, what if any difference there is in the wastewater plan between andover and uh, ready mr O'Leary, go ahead a couple of different things first of all this is more in relation to our current plan of what was originally going to be tying into the mwra for potable water Drinking water. Right. In order to get the appropriate permits, we have to do a more detailed plan in relation to not only potable water but also wastewater. So it's, we're in the process of uh, responding to the appropriate authorities as to what our long range plan is short term for potable water and long range for wastewater. Uh, it was not anticipated based upon our consultants and uh, studies that we've done, the vast majority of our wastewater would probably go to the Greater Lawrence Sewer District, not MWRA. And as far as the response to the permitting authorities, that's part of what our, our game plan was. And we still have to study what the feasibility is for tying in through and over to Greater Lawrence. Okay. Right? Um, since that time, since that last meeting, which was a year, year and a half ago, whenever it was, or whatever it was, uh, uh, we, we may have an opportunity to tie in to the MWRA for a portion of Concord Street. That's new. You know, before we weren't allowed to, just the Teradyne property was tied in to uh, MWRA. There may be an opportunity for us to tie in that mile, mile and a quarter of Concord Street to the MWRA. That also is being studied now. You know, as far as timelines, certainly the Potable water is our most pressing issue, and that's what we have to address first and foremost. It's just a question as to whether or not the permitting authorities will allow us, or wish for us, to simultaneously uh, have all the information as to what our long-term plan is for wastewater. Uh, with this uh, opportunity with Andover, uh, there appears to be more of a, uh, an appetite for them to assist us in getting into the Greater Lawrence Sewer District sooner rather than later. But that's something that the board hasn't fully considered yet. But we have to respond to the uh, to the FEIR, DEIR, and FEIR process to these uh, permitting authorities as to what our long-term plan is for not just drinking water, but wastewater. So that's why we have to spend the money now to do it. Okay. I just didn't know if you won't be tied in. You won't be tied in next week, or, or, or you won't be tied in next week or next year, or probably two years or five years from now. What's that? You are. I said you won't be tied in probably for a while. Yeah. If at all. To what? The if water at all. or the, the wastewater? Oh, the wastewater. <laughs> wastewater. So you don't have to worry about that right now. 
But again, no, I wasn't as far as the wastewater, we have to do the study, we have to do the analysis, we have yeah. to uh, determine what we think the usage is going to be and what the long range plan as far as tying I is. I was just be. thinking that the wastewater plan, if the one that was done to tie into Reading, would be applicable. There wasn't or does any the real, whole thing have there to wasn't be any plan to tie in wastewater with Reading. Oh, you didn't do it? No, no. Part the, of it at the all? long range plan for wastewater was Greater Lawrence Sewer. Okay. We now may have an opportunity to tie in okay. Concord Street only through Reading. Okay. But that's new. That's recent. Okay. The I MWRA basically didn't have additional capacity to sewer. They've got some downstream issues they have to fix first. Yeah. The extension at Concord Street, which is just a mile point mile something, point, something yeah. is, I guess, something that they said we could, they could probably provide to us without impacting their issues downstream. Does that go through Wilmington, or does that go through It'll Reading? Be Reading. Right. Right. It goes through Reading? It goes also. into Reading. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on this article? Please continue to 11. Article 11 would authorize the Board of Selectmen to file special legislation and to enter into a 99-year agreement, up to a 99-year agreement with Andover for potable water. And this is something that would be um, associated with the potential pursuit of a long-term uh, relationship with Andover, providing 100% of our water. Any other questions on this article we've already recommended? And again, just the way of explanation. Uh, again, we'll be looking for support from town meeting for this home rule petition to allow the board to have the opportunity, just put the, the tool in the toolbox between now and April, which is the date that we set, uh, to make a determination that if we decide to go with Andover, we have to file a home rule petition and have special legislation filed in order to enter into, the, into this agreement. Uh, so we'd like to have the opportunity to do that sooner than rather than later, rather than waiting until next June uh, to come back to town meeting, if we decide to take advantage of it. Uh, just to jump ahead to Article 14, we're looking for, again, special legislation, potable water interconnection with Reading, because it has to cross some conservation land. Again, we'll take legislative action. So what the board is asking for in these two instances is authorization from town meeting to take whatever uh, appropriate action we deem uh, appropriate after due consideration uh, in the short term rather than waiting again till next June to go back to town meeting. So we're just looking for the authorization. The board is uh, very uh, intimately involved and actively involved in negotiating and evaluating things and will be for the next several months. And we just would like the opportunity to, uh, to take action sooner rather than later. There's no funds, no funding associated with this article. Okay, any other questions? Yes, please. District report. That's okay. Uh, That's what we're here for tonight. <laughs> um, when um, the, ta the Board of Selectmen um, decide to go with Andover, does this automatically terminate any agreements with, with Reading? Or is it the intent to continue to pursue both for, for, for the next year or something? Mr. O'Leary. We're, again, we're, we're, we're moving in tandem right now. Right. Again, Andover came in uh, very late into the game here. I mean, we had already appropriated the money and we're ready to go with the MWRA and we're about ready to elect contracts uh, for construction uh, for projects in the town of Reading in order to uh, meet our needs to tie us in. Uh, Andover's proposal uh, was of interest enough and significant enough where the board deemed it appropriate to take the uh, requisite amount of time to take a look at that proposal and put the MWRA basically on hold at this point. But we, we're still negotiating, we're still talking with them, we're still moving forward on both. So that uh, we've set a deadline of April 30th for ourselves to make a determination, right. Andover mm -hmm. or MWRA. Okay. And that's why we need this special legislation authorization on both of these, so that when we make that determination, we don't have to wait another three or four months to move forward and wait for the legislature to to act, you, you could lose six months to a year. So we're asking for the authorization now. So we haven't made a final determination. Uh, what we have made a determination that Andover's offer is significant enough for us to consider and that uh, we need to do our due diligence 
and okay. uh, it yeah. made a fiduciary responsibility to, to evaluate yeah. it. So MWRA is still alive, yeah. and over is alive. Uh, okay. So we're actually in a pretty good position. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About a year ago, we had one choice. Now we right. have two. Any other questions? Article 12. Article 12, two components to it. The first is to authorize supp supplemental funding for the construction of the MWRA interconnection. No funding request is anticipated at town meeting, so we do not expect to request funding, any additional funding uh, um, appropriation. This article would also authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any remaining action to finalize joining the MWRA for water, including uh, processes for uh, the repayment of the so-called buy-in cost to the MWRA. There's a specific authorization for borrowing that we believe we may be required to have in hand. We will be requesting that authorization at town meeting. Uh, it would be the final step uh, re required for um, signing off for the buy-in the MWRA for the, for the MWRA if that is the direction that we opt to go in come next April. Any questions? I didn't understand that. Sure. So there's two pieces of this article. The first would be to fund any uh, additional cost that we would need, in addition to what was funded at the June town meeting, for construction, in order to complete construction of the interconnection. We do not have any projected additional costs for that work right now. So we won't be asking for any funding for construction. But there is a requirement for authorization to borrow from the MWRA in a financing that they provide to the town for the buy-in cost associated with the MWRA, we would be seeking that authorization at this town meeting. Just the authorization. That's it. authorization yep. for borrowing. That's give us correct. the authority. Town meeting and, gives and us the authority. This is borrowing that's been discussed in the two to three year planning process for the MWRA for a cost that's been well known and well publicized um, that's been built into our cost model for um, potentially go into the MWRA. Yeah. And let me just add a couple things to maybe clarify it a little bit more. Mr. O'Leary has explained to you about this path of trying to get to April. Right. If we get to April and we make our determination, well, when, once we go through October town meeting, we're going to have the authority now, if the decision in April is to go at Andover, we're going to have all the authority we need to go forward. We're going to come back for additional funds down the road, but we'll at least have the authority to go forward. If we decide to go at MWRA, we're going to have the authority to go forward with whatever path we picked by the way we have these articles structured in the way we have them ordered. Uh, that yeah, uh, uh, j just further clarification, you know, we've already appropriated money for the construction of the pumping station. We just weren't sure, again, we haven't gone out to let the contracts yet. Uh, we were intending on getting to that point shortly. Uh, so this was almost a placeholder to, if we needed more money, to get it. In addition to that, there's the $7.6 million buy-in at a 0% interest rate from the uh, MWRA to be paid over 20, 25 years. Uh, that's what we need the authorization for. So basically, that's all we're going to be looking for, So authorizing the board to enter into that agreement with the MWRA. The construction costs appear to be covered based upon our estimates if we move forward to build the pumping station. But if you go to Andover, you don't need this pumping station, right? Correct. That's correct. Correct. But we we have, have all the money authorized and approved and ready to go with the yeah. MWRA, so we're all set. But, so, but we may not have to spend any of it if we go with right. Andover. But until we get to April, but we don't want to be held up to have to wait till June to get this authority. Yeah, because if we wait till June to go to our authorization with the uh, special legislation, you know, then you basically have six to eight weeks to get the legislature to act on it, and it's a, an election year, and they prorogue the end of July. The chances of getting it done on a timely basis yeah. is... Right. They take a summer Somewhat break. Somewhat slim. <laughs> so that's why we, we would be requesting the authorization to get the authorization on both projects sooner rather than later. Uh, give us the, the time to uh, do the due diligence, make a decision, determination, file the necessary legislation, and move forward rather than having to wait and lose six months to a year. Any further questions? Make sense to you, George? Okay. Make sense to you? Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's good. We get his support. That's good. Good. Mr. <laughs> 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 
So Article 13, again, related to uh, the MWRA interconnection, and this is a very similar language associated w as was presented for the Andover interconnection. This would authorize a selectman to file special legislation to enter into a 99-year agreement with the town of Reading, up to a 99-year agreement with the town of Reading for potable water. Uh, should the determination be made to follow that direction relative to our potable water long-term solution. Uh, this is something that we identified uh, after the June town meeting this past June as uh, an issue that would, uh, that would be to the town's advantage to have in place, meaning the authority to have uh, a long-term agreement with Reading through whom we'd have to bring the water from the MWRA to the North Reading town line. We believe this would be to our advantage for both, for both communities, actually. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Okay. In Article 14, again related to the MWRA interconnection, uh, in our discussions with the Town of Reading, it's come to light that some of the parcels that may or may not be impacted by the interconnection are uh, Article 97, protected land. It's a land that's owned by the Town of Reading, located on Mill Street, along both sides of the town's border, so Reading owning land in the town of Reading and also owning land in the town of North Reading that's conservation um, prote protected. Uh, there are four parcels and I've kind of tried to draw a map to outline them. Uh, you see the two that are there in North Reading and the two that are down there on either side of Mill Street in Reading. And this would allow us to file jointly with the town of Reading for special legislation uh, in order to construct on those parcels if that were determined to be the required need from an engineering standpoint. Again, it would be done, uh, this does not allow us to North Reading on its own is, as far as we know, unable to achieve this. It needs to be done in conjunction with the Town of Reading. Based on the timing of our town meeting, we felt this was the appropriate time to bring this up in the event that a determination is made to go in this direction. Okay. Any questions? Next article, please. Article 15 would amend the general bylaws to create a social host bylaw, and I know there's been a couple of discussions in front of the Board of Selectmen here um, relative to this article. I'll read the summary here, and um, if there's any further questions, uh, probably will defer uh, to, the, uh, to the police chief only from his first-hand knowledge uh, of the, uh, the bylaw. Uh, but the bylaw would place responsibility on parents, guardians, and other individuals to ensure that unlawful activity does not take place at parties or gatherings held at private residences and other locations, including motels, hotels, and, function, and other functions. State law does govern underage drinking and illegal substance abuse activity. This local bylaw would regulate this activity at the local level while not impacting the criminal penalties for such behavior under state law or the potential for civil liability and violations of the local bylaw would be punishable by instituting fines of up to $300. Um, again, I think as has been discussed, uh, there's certainly a punishment of a fine, but there's also a, a other processes by which uh, education of the property owner can take place, uh, including a, a warning or lower fine being, uh, being issued. So this is one article the board hasn't taken any action on. I know we had some members that wanted a little more time to research it, look into it. Uh, if you have any more questions at this time and want to discuss it, maybe I've, without Mr. Schultz here on this particular subject, I would suggest maybe we... Yes, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, since our last meeting, uh, the chief was generous enough with his time to spend some time with me uh, to clarify for me. Again, I, I had probably the most number of questions in relation to the redundancy of the need, of the need for uh, additional regulations in a bylaw that we already have laws on the books that prohibit this type of activity. Uh, I'm satisfied now that this is a uh, would be a useful tool for the police department uh, from a civil standpoint rather than a criminal standpoint to uh, educate the public, uh, keep them better informed, uh, increase dialogue, and probably uh, hopefully effectuate some some good positive uh, change in some of the views of some individuals. So uh, I personally will be supporting the article. Uh, it's up to the board if they want to change the recommendation for this evening or wait until the uh, town meeting. But I will be after my conversations with the chief. And again, I thank you, chief, for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, we'll be supporting it. Mr. Mosseri, you? I was in support of it. Okay. Uh, I don't know where Andrew was. He was, I, he, he was in support of it. I think I was the only holdout. 
<laughs> and, and again, I appreciate the uh, members, uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, providing me the opportunity yeah, to absolutely. become a little better informed. We can take a motion. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 15, amend the code, the general bylaws, the social host responsibility bylaw. I have a motion or a second? This is move to recommend, not recommend at town meeting. Move oh, to um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We already voted that. <laughs> that, that so we changed the move right. to recommend. Move to recommend it. Second. Second by Ms. Masseri. Any more discussion? Any questions of the public? Well, good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. One absent. Article 7, uh, 16. Thank you. Article 16, relative to betterment assessments. This article would modify the existing bylaw relative to betterments by eliminating the requirement that the town pay 50% of the cost of the project, allowing betterment projects to proceed in the absence of town funds. And right now, we have a bylaw in place that requires the town match of at least 50% of the costs. Oftentimes we find ourselves in a situation where the town does not have any funding source available to match that cost. This could provide uh, a tool available to those property owners who may wish to proceed with a betterment funded project that's administered by the town and financed by the town with a long-term payback period uh, when there isn't town funding available to augment it. And both the public works director and the town engineer are here to speak further as to any questions that might come up relative to the proposed bylaw. Any questions from the board members? Yeah, but just give us a rundown as to currently what's required or, and why this is being proposed again. So I'd ask either the public works director or the town engineer, whichever you get preference, Andrew. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Lafferty, public works director. Um, so the only change that, that we recommended on this was currently the way it's worded, um, the town is required to pay the 50% cost of the project. Um, we've requested that it be changed, that the town has the option up to 100% to either assess the, the property owner or if the town has the funds available, that would open up the option for the, for the town to also pay, their por pay a portion. Um, the intent, the whole intent behind it was to, in, in the absence of town funds to at least give the residents the option of a, on a private way to proceed with some sort of betterment um, as compared to what, what seems to have happened in, in the past in some cases is if the town didn't have their 50 percent the the option would kind of stop at that point so at least this gives a little more options for the residents to move forward if they desire the, does this chairman does this proposal uh, preclude the town from being required to share in the costs with the people in the private ways? Negative. Does it get the town off the hook? Right right now we're saying that it has to be a 50-50 split. If the town doesn't have the funds, it doesn't happen. Correct. So the town... The so so if, if that's the case, then the option is still there for the residents to proceed and the town would therefore assess the full cost of the project back to the property owners over the long-term um, commitment. Once, uh, once the, uh, say the property owners opt into this thing and pay the 100% for the betterment, um, as far as future improvements or, or maintenance or upkeep, does it, does it doesn't necessarily become an accepted stream. So, the so what would be the expectation on the resident's part from the town should the road need some crack sealing or resurfacing or so it's our understanding um, through town council that the requirement is the road would become accepted in order for this to, in order for a betterment to happen the road has to become accepted so it has to be built to a certain standard it would have to build to built to be an, an acceptable standard to the town whereas currently we share the cost with some residents to bring some substandard roads up to a less than acceptable standard in order to improve it, correct? There's been, 
projects in the past that have been done where the town has um, contributed with other entities to improve roads. Um, after some discussion with town council, that that really isn't the uh, intent of the bylaw or the Mass General Laws betterments um, and the way it's supposed to be assessed. My, my, my concern is, you know, our past practice, while we haven't been able to do as much as we'd like to do, it allows us to, and again, it's a win-win because, you know, we, we send out uh, a cruise every year to put some stone and dirt and create some more dust uh, and fill in the the uh, Pot potholes and the, yep. and the crevices Crowell. that are created through the mud season. Uh, and again, we, we share the cost and basically uh, bring it up to a better standard, but not necessarily to a full acceptable standard, uh, which is better than nothing. You know, and again, the town shares it, but again, we haven't been able to do as much as we'd like to do. My concern is, is if we accept this, are we precluded from doing that anymore? Uh, we, there's been no change to the town bylaw. Um, it's my belief and it's the understanding with t speaking with town council that we've been applying it improperly, historically. So um, I'm okay town, with that. Town council, <laughs> town council has advised us that under the betterment process, a town has to be accepted as a public road when the betterment is complete. Okay, that's a betterment which is paid over, say, 20 years. Correct. Right. Whereas right. currently, our current practice is, you know, it's going to cost, you know, forty thousand dollars, and it's twenty thousand town, twenty thousand residents, and it's kind of paid up front, up front and on a timely basis rather than over time. Would that preclude us from continuing to engage in that type of activity? I'm not aware of any policy or bylaw that allows us to do that, so I'm not sure. The only thing that I'll, the only other piece that's out there for on the public work side is there is a there is the authority for us to maintain public uh, private ways to keep them accessible to safety equipment, um, plowing, uh, fire, and police, and and that's done at at a, at a minimum cost. Right, and again, I think that's uh, we've we've made these improvements under that guise. Let's put it that way, where we have spent more than just bringing some fill in and gravel to grade it out or grade it, grade it twice a year to, to maintain it. We've actually, in sharing with the costs with the uh, residents, upgraded in order to make that public safety accessibility better without having to meet the minimum standards for accepted streets. So if I, my understanding of this bylaw, this change, it allows us, right now it's 50%. This allows us to go up up to 100%. Michael, you're missing, to, no, no, yeah, yeah, you're you're missing you know, the point. You're missing my point, <laughs> is that yeah, this goes up to, we can pass off 100% of the cost to the, to the residents and bill them over 20 years. Yep. And you know, maybe some residents would be willing to do that. But what our practice has been is that we'll do in any given year uh, you know, a group of residents on an unaccepted street will approach us and say, listen, you know, how much for the town to pay this thing? Mm -hmm. We'll split it with you 50-50 and pay right up front and do it. Uh, but when we do it, it, it's not necessarily to the CPCs or the bylaws acceptable standards for an accepted street. You know, what might, the width may be a little bit less, the uh, underpinnings of it may be not the same as it should be if you're going to have an accepted street. You know, my concern is, is that if we adopt this, are we precluded from entering into agreements with residents to do it in a more cost-effective manner, which is from a public safety standpoint, plowing standpoint, to the advantage of the community, and again, for ambulance and police and fire, a better deal. Are we, are we precluding ourselves from that type of activity? I don't believe adopting this would preclude us from that. I believe Mass General Law would preclude us from doing that. Based on town councils, but we're not going to. We're not. We're not. We're not. Or we haven't, in the past, provided an opportunity for a betterment for our residents. What we've said is, we'll basically create a uh, a driveway for you, and share the cost. You know. 
in okay, the interest so of public safety. If you read the article, it's at section two, 24, 25-2, section two. It talks about, we have to have a public hearing. The abutters on the private streets must vote on whether they want their street converted to a public street. If we do any of this work up here, they have to agree on it to become no, a public. No, I, I, I understand that. I, I guess what, I, what I'm concerned about is are we, by accepting or proposing this and accepting it, are we precluding ourselves from the previous type of activity that we've been engaged in? Because that may be more cost effective to get some things done. This, you know, for a long term, you know, some of the residents might say, okay, over 20 years I'll pay the betterment. You know, and if the town's gonna split the cost or share the cost or not share any of it at all, but it's gonna get their street done, you know, that's a decision they have to make. But I'm concerned that, you know, on some of these uh, smaller unaccepted streets where we have, you know, a few residents who are willing to share the cost on an immediate basis, pay it now, uh, as opposed to through betterment, are we gonna be precluded from doing that? Mr. Gilbert. I believe the answer is that we're technically precluded from it now, if I understand the, the opinion correctly. Uh, my understanding is that what we've done historically is we've shared in the cost with the abutting property owners, a 50-50 split or something like that, with a requirement that there be an upfront payment because it hasn't really been assessed as a betterment in order to do maybe uh, those improvements to a lesser standard. I think the more common thing that's happened and the more common instances that I'm familiar with are that the development is, that the improvement is done in conjunction with the development in the neighborhood. There's a lot that's reconstructed and it's a requirement that a developer contribute. The more likely scenario, the, mo the more frequent scenario is that the town is making the improvement in conjunction with the developer. Um, I don't think that the bylaw is gonna preclude that, but there may be other actions we wish to take to codify what we're looking to do. I, I think what has happened in the past, and, uh, and I may be criticized for saying what I'm about to say, uh, well, I'll say it in a positive way. The, the, the Community Planning Commission has been uh, successful in getting developers to do additional off-site improvements at, additional, at their additional cost in order to get approval for their proposal. Uh, it is not necessarily required of them because they had a buildable lot, but for the time's sake of, of getting things approved, the developers have a, agreed to do these sorts of things. Um, they weren't necessarily required to do so. So, you know, time is money. Uh, and so they've been very successful in requiring developers to improve some unapproved streets up to whatever the lot is they're looking to develop or a portion thereof, whether it be through water lines or whether it be through pavement and, and road upgrades. Uh, they were not necessarily required to do so, and some developers have balked at it and have been successful in developing their lots without doing the off-site improvements. They've been able to wait it out. But we shouldn't have to, you know, be dependent upon that. Okay, so, so my only concern is, is, is if there is a, you know, a small street with some, you know, half a dozen residents or, or less who are willing to share the cost of upgrading the access to their property and improving the public safety and wear and tear on our plowing equipment and maintenance and upkeep that we take care of on an unaccepted street already, um, lessening, our, lessening our costs, we shouldn't preclude ourselves from doing so. And again, I, I know that, you know, I, I believe we've been doing it under the guise of public safety access. And maybe town council thinks that's a stretch, but it's, it's worked, you know? And I just don't want to limit our ability to continue to do that with this. And, and again, this again, unless the residents agree to it, you know, up to 100%, that's, I, I'm okay with this. I just don't want it to preclude us from continuing the practices that uh, We've engaged in already. Mr. Yeah, I look at this as this is requirements. If you're going to allow the citizens to use the betterment process, therefore it has to meet all these requirements. Mm -hmm. There's no restriction on what we've done in the past here. And I think what Andrew was stating was that in the review, the town council says what we've done in the past may not meet all of the requirements 
are any of the requirements of current state law. Well, that may be just an interpretation. I don't know. I don't see this restricting. I, I, I just want to make sure, or I'd like to know, and again, the administrations change, the interpretations change, you know, uh, what would our the current board and the current administration's position be on a neighborhood who's willing to split the cost up front right now rather than going through this process to make an improvement in the, in the neighborhood on an unaccepted street? Will we continue with the current practice? But also, th again, this would provide for additional opportunities for people to spread out over 20 years. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. That's a good thing. I just don't want us as an administration to preclude some residents from engaging, rather than going through a 20-year betterment process, um, getting it done sooner rather than later to a little lesser standard. I read it that you, we have that flexibility now. Now we have it all the way up to 100%. That, that, but if you do this betterment thing, it has to be it has to be to a standard of an acceptable street, and to meet the standard of an acceptable street is a pretty tall task for many of the unaccepted streets in this community. And in some cases, probably impossible. Uh, so I don't disagree, but okay. this requires a certain standard of construction. I, no, I see where you're going with it, so I'm yeah. not sure. You know, it's here I just for want to reason. make sure that we as an administration for those areas that may not be able to even do this very easily. Okay, but if the board doesn't recommend this time, or we don't recommend it at town meeting and it fails, it sounds like to me the past practice is over regardless. Well, that's my understanding. Uh, Mr. Only Gilbert? if the current administration says that. And if that's the case, I want to hear it. And then we need to have another I discussion. That, I think that we have other steps that we would need to take in order to better memorialize and codify that past practice if that's the intention you know in other words if we want to have a, a road con uh, a partnership for road improvements that are not going to be improved to the standard of an accepted road then we have some more work to do relative to our existing bylaws or new bylaws or even special legislation if required in order to do it to comply. Well, Mr. Gilberto will you be in agreement that's article 16 if we if it gets voted in favor at town meeting takes away the flexibility that Mr. O'Leary is re referencing. Takes away the flexibility? Yeah, we don't have I, that flexibility. I don't see anymore. that it has any effect one way or the other yeah. on the flexibility. Okay, so you're saying this bylaw, the way it's written, doesn't preclude us from going ahead and in investing in an embedment that doesn't get it to the standard of an accepted It, it doesn't preclude us in any way that we are not already precluded <laughs> today. Does it impede a past practice? I don't know that it impedes the past practice either, to be candid with you. No. Okay, um, then. I'm is it the intention to allow for something similar to our past practice to continue? Uh, I would say this. I, I've been. I worked in communities where that past practice has been quite successful. I can't tell you exactly what under what authority it was established, but it, it, it can be very. It can be very successful. So, I, I think if we can nail down how that would work, that would help us. I mean, right, right now the way this happens is, you know, well beyond any planning scenario that takes place, we may become instructed by a, uh, an approval that takes place from another regulatory board that we have a, a role in improving the road without necessarily having had the opportunity to budget for it, to put the project in a queue. I, I think we should correct that because often what happens is that other projects may suffer because of that. Um, and that's not to say that it's not a good public purpose, but there could be a better planning effort at it, I think. Well, I but I don't see this bylaw as really that. We're going to meet again before town meeting on the second. I'd suggest maybe between now and then we can get some more information, some answers to Mr. O'Leary's concerns, questions, and we'll revisit it on the second. Uh, again, I, I think this is a good idea. I think it more comes down to what is our current administration's policy going to be in allowing some residents of our community to approach the town on a practice of 50-50 split to approve the standard of the road in front of their home. Not necessarily to the standard. You know, I, I, without I, the betterment. I'll speak for myself. I'm okay. not going to speak to the public works director, but I'll speak for myself. 
I would like to see a, a, a structure in place that would allow us to continue to meet that need when the proposal comes forth from groups of residents. But I don't know how often that actually occurs. I think the more likely scenario is that the proposal comes associated with development. And that's not to say that it hasn't been a good thing either, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar at least, other than one inquiry we've received that I'm not totally familiar with, that the interest has been there to make those improvements from residents, existing residents only. Maybe, I mean, again, I don't, I've only got a three years of history, so this I don't. This is Pelly. No, that I, I, I had similar questions, so it would be helpful, I think, to hear from town council, because my understanding was the same. If it's a betterment assessment, it's for an improvement that's to the benefit of the private parcel owner, and that's why it's a betterment assessment to begin with. But also, this seems to say that the process now will be that those private residents are going to vote to say, you know, our street's going to become an accepted public way and the town can contribute up to 100% of the creation of the public way, but then it's our responsibility after that for everything after that if it's a public way, obviously. So, versus now, how many private ways are there in the city, in the town? I think there's a total of just over 30. Oh. We, I think, we, if, if I remember correctly, it was somewhere around eight miles worth. Obviously, the majority of them are short streets. Because I'm assuming that most of these parcel owners are going to say, let's take a vote and make it a public way, and it takes that, you know, it takes that discretion out of the well, town's hands. Specifically, in order to get up to the residents up at Swan Pond, there's a lot of town owned land on the way there, along with some sure. other property owners that own acreage that haven't developed yet. Um, so in order for, Mrs. Gravata has been fighting for this for years. So I, Mr. Chairman, I'll defer to Mrs. Gravata. Yes. Uh, Good evening. Why don't you come on up? Okay. Are there, you need to go to the table or up there? Phil, did you do that to her? <laughs> that doesn't look good. It, it looks worse than it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm Rosalie Cravada at, at 223 Swan Pond Road. I, um, uh, I just want to make it brief, but you kind of covered a, a lot of things, Steve, that I, you know, some things that I wanted to say. Um, I, um, Okay, so obviously the current betterment is, is a 50-50, and there's been many roads that were able to take advantage of that um, opportunity, and one of those roads actually is the beginning section of Swan Pond Road, the first half mile, um, and that was paved, um, I think, around 1999, um, when Dave Hamlin was uh, at, at the DPW director. and. Uh, that road was paved, and that was actually split 50-50 uh, between the town of North Reading and Danvers. Uh, Danvers uh, agreed to, to do that um, because they own the rights to the water at the reservoir at Swan Pond. And I think it was uh, last year, in 2016, the town actually um, repaved that first half mile of Swan Pond Road and made it an accepted roadway so that it was eligible for Chapter 90 funding, so that the state paid for that repaving of that section. Now, that road was not brought up to whatever the current, current you know, road standards are. Uh, so there's one particular case that it, the improvement was made, but the road wasn't brought up to a, a, a certain you know, width uh, that might be the standard now for developments that come into town. Um, as uh, I'm representing myself and the majority of residents at Swan Pond that do want to have our road paved, I feel like we have been in the queue <laughs> for a lot of years for this. Um, going back since, like I said, 1999 when the first section was paved. And um, the town then further uh, in 2008 paved Adam Street, which is the other road that goes on the other side of Swan Pond, and uh, that was done with the 
so that residents had that cost share with the town. And um, fortunately for those residents, there was one resident that offered to put in that total 50% share for the residents. So that was paved in 2008. And uh, we, we have, like I said, been kind of in a queue for at least 10 years to this request been in to have the, the final section of gravel road at Swan Pond paved. Um, and unfortunately for us, we've had changes in the administration um, with two DPW directors, Dave Hanlon, uh, you know, retiring, and then Dick Carnavalli uh, also leaving. And uh, through Dick Carnavalli's efforts, um, he actually came in and did some widening of the road uh, to try to help for fire and road safety. And we were, again, getting to the point where the discussion was there about the next steps for coming in and paving the road. So now here we are again, <laughs> kind of starting up from scratch. And I would make an appeal to the board that you consider um, keeping the 50-50 cost share for situations, you know, like our road. Um, and uh, like I said, this has been just an ongoing thing for many years up there. Um, so I just want to speak on behalf of the residents for that purpose. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Mr. Please, Please right to the boating, if you don't mind. <laughs> the, uh, I think what's, what's being overlooked here is that uh, it's the human part of it. It's like it's very difficult to get the people in a community on, on a road like Swamp on Road to all agree to do this. And you know, I'm not the right person to do it, but Rosie's very good at that, and she communicates with the town and the DPW to that effect. And I think that, <clears throat> you know, part of the, this is sort of like a stumbling block to that, getting that kind of agreement with the people on the road. You know, to say that the town will pick up 50% of the paving cost, it's kind of a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a positive thing to tell the people. Um, the other thing is that the road is about, it's about a half mile long. And there are sections in the road that are owned by the town. Um, it's it's something that, um, like I say, well, like Rosie said, that Dave, I think Dave Hanlon would have got it done because he was getting to that point. Then the guy retired on us, and uh, <laughs> Carnavali, I think, was he was you know, he was heading in that direction, I think. And uh, but I I don't think this is. I mean, I understand what the intent is here, and I think it's important to, you know, the count of beans, so to speak. But uh, again, I think it's uh, it's in the interest of the town. I think as much as it is in the interest of the people who live out there to get this done. We've been out there 40 years, and so we've watched the town, and they've done an excellent job. Bring out material, do the grading. And I want to say that probably tens of thousands of dollars and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in 40 years have gone into this. And we still have a dirt road. So at, at some point, somebody should have bit the bullet, I think. And each DPW director realizes that this would be better for the town if we did have the, uh, the paved road. But so uh, I would agree with Rosie. I don't think it's, a, it's going to be easy to get people to go along with and sign over the, the rights and say this is a public way now and, and uh, you've got to pay it all. Uh, I do like the part of, of where it's spread out over 20 years. Um, but I guess that, you know, that's uh, pretty much what I got to say about that. So I guess I, I would say I would rather see it stay the way it is. Uh, our road is narrow in some spots, wider in other spots. And you're never, you're never going to meet the requirements of uh, of the accepted road. The other thing that I sort of feel in my head is that it's technically a private way, but since 
the courts decided in 1950 that nobody could block the road. Nobody out there has ever tried to stop the public from going in there. So I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know what the technical part of it is, but it almost seems to me like it, it is a public way. You know, if, if for, since 1950, nobody has been stopped from driving there, walking there, jogging, walking, uh, that sort of thing. I don't know if we need to get into that. It's, it's one more stumbling block, I guess, to get people to say, you're gonna sign it away as a, a public right away. They didn't do it on the other side uh, when, when, uh, when that was done, and I don't really see if there was any problem or that there would be any problem. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. Just as a, uh, an explanation to as far as uh, Mr. Carnevale's tenure here, uh, his focus was, and again, and he had a lot of conversations with uh, Rosalie, but uh, you know, his, his focus was on getting as many uh, unaccepted streets or portions of unaccepted streets to an acceptable level to increase our Chapter 90 funding and did a pretty good job. I don't know how many additional miles he was able to include, which again provides the town with additional uh, revenues to maintain and upgrade, you know, streets. So that was more his focus, and he had a considerable amount of success with it. Uh, it didn't get you your road done, but uh, I mean, uh, I've, I've been sympathetic uh, with the Cravatas for over 40 years now, <laughs> and. Uh, no, I will tell you, it's a pet peeve of mine to see these graveled roads continue to get graded after every rainstorm, and it just doesn't seem to make sense to me that we continue to have our DPW crews go out there, bring out the equipment, bring new material, lay it down. Another rainstorm comes, it goes away, they remove it, move it around again. Uh, I, it would be nice to have a plan, but I'm not so sure this bylaw precludes that from happening. Uh, again, most of my concern is, and again, this is, this is a vehicle by which, you know, maybe this neighborhood and other neighborhoods could take advantage of and spread it over 20 years and it becomes more palatable for people mm. uh, financially and, and again, the upgrades get done. The problem is, is that it has to be done to such a standard that it's uh, <coughs> probably not realistic in some sections of the community, which is unfortunate. Uh, and I just want to make sure that we don't abandon our uh, past practice of improving some of these neighborhoods with a shared cost. Again, this also provides for passing off 100% of this cost for the residents as opposed to 50-50, which is what our current practice has been. Me, uh, uh, this allows up to 50, you know, up to 100% to be borne by the town or, or the residents. The you know, so it, this way it, it can get the taxpayers off the hook for tax-paying members of the community who want right. to join the same type of benefits. Last yes, they bought into that type of neighborhood. Last question on this, and we can move to the next article. Do we, are you saying that we've done this past practice, we have roads that we've done some improvements on to get them to a level, we've accepted those roads? Not necessarily, no. We have not accepted those we've roads. We've never accepted they a road. They are still unaccepted streets, but they're in far better condition. Now, there are some of those streets that we have upgraded and gone yeah, back to it again, yeah. as was pointed out by Mrs. Cravat, our section of uh, Swan Pond Road, which was an unaccepted street, 50-50 betterment, 50-50 split, median cost taken care of to a certain point, mm. and now the town has gone back, brought it up to the standard, and included it in the chapter, for chapter 90 funding. So we, we've approved some of those unaccepted streets to a level that's acceptable, but, and that would be borne by the DPW. Got it. Rosalie's got it. Just quickly on that. Swan Pine Road. Um, that was the town did accept that as a uh, approved it as an accepted roadway, so that it became not into the Chapter 90, so they paved it that way. But that wasn't brought up to any different standard. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was just, you know the same with everything. So it just it just seemed like the town chooses to to do it and make a. a Thank you. So does the board want to make a recommendation tonight or wait till town meeting on this act 
on this article. No motion, Ms. Masseri? I, I can recommend this. I think it's, it, it would be valuable for certain areas of town, and what Steve says is also valuable for certain areas of town. If, in fact, there's some state requirement to, uh, or a bylaw or whatever that you can't do it, uh, maybe there's a workaround and we should take care of it. Maybe we need another article that won't go in this town meeting to deal with and document what we do in the other situation, because I think you have both. And I see nothing in here that interferes with what we've been doing in the past. The only thing that might interfere with what we've been doing in the past is some state law. And I don't think we have all the information here to determine whether or not we've been violating the law or this is something that's come in place recently that we have to take another look at. But this doesn't prevent us from continuing what we're doing. It's something else that maybe prevents us from doing what we've been doing. Mr. O'Leary? And that's sad. And again, I don't, I don't want uh, our administration, should this prevail, to just point to this and say, this is the only way you can get your road done. That, that's probably the major concern. If you want an accepted road, this article will help us get there. If you don't want an accepted road, we should still but have a but process again, in place. From the town's to get standpoint, we want an accepted road because then it qualifies sure. for Chapter 9. But it may not necessarily be right. feasible, economically feasible, to do eight miles of road mm -hmm. to these standards. And yet it may be in everybody's best interest to invest in our community on the current practice of 50-50 split to bring it up to a better standard, but not necessarily the standard. This, again, puts you in, uh, in line with the state statute and our current bylaws for an accepted street. And I'm telling you, for what's left in our community, and my colleagues here know it as well as I do, most of what's left, probably, right. a lot of it wouldn't wouldn't meet that standard without right. infringing on people's property. You know, the and I haven't heard an objection <clears throat> from the administration that the past practice policy didn't. No, would. I just heard some the equivocation. It's got to be careful, and I understand. <coughs> Do I have a motion on this? Okay, did you have a, one thing you want to say? Uh, I just think that if we recommend this, the same process still applies here where you've, you've got to get what it says is the majority of the residents on the street to agree to this anyway. So you're in the same spot of, you know, maybe not, not all those people are in agreement that, you know, we're going to ask for this to be made into a public way and then we're going to accept the cost <coughs> of the construction of it. And I, I mean, we have, we have other roadways. I, Central Street's a good example. It doesn't have sidewalks. It doesn't probably meet the conditions, but I think that in the process of uh, those roadway improvement projects, I've got to think that we've applied for, for some sort of variances or waivers to be able to utilize the funding to pave roads that might not necessarily comply with every regulation there is. I don't think it eliminates the, the town's ability for DPW to bring, it, bring us a street and say, accept this as a public way and here's how much it's going to cost the town to improve it and you know pave it and take care of it and here's what we're going to need for waivers because we can't do this that or meet this guideline or requirement but I think this is something different than that this is for private ways that is going to require the residents of the ways to say yes that's what we want and throw it in the queue for DPW when the funds come available. So it, I don't think it puts you any closer to what your goal is, really, from the way it reads. And I don't know why I'm not following. That's why I said, can we hold off till we get some more information? I don't follow why you know, another type of process is unlawful. I, I don't follow that. So I would prefer if we could just get some clarification 
on why we need this and does it eliminate the other routes that we could possibly take. I can't see it, but I'm not the town's council, so. Why don't we put this one on for another discussion on the October 2nd meeting prior to town meeting. Try to get a little more information if we could. Okay. Can I just make another remark? Please. Is that the other thing this does do is that there are sections that are owned by the town, but it puts the whole cost in other words, the town's not even going to pay for their sections if, if it goes 100%. No, no, it's up to 100%. Up to 100%. It could be less than 100, far less. It could be less than 50%. <coughs> this allows us to do, it could be It could be 10%. But when you're trying to convince people to go along and get enough people, you got to get 51% of the, the footage. It makes it tougher. And uh, it, it just seems like the town should at least pay for their own part of Thank you. Can I ask a if to the podium, please, and state your name and the address, please. First of all, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Tom Way. I'm at 230 Swan Pond Road, and uh, Phil and Rosalie are my neighbors. And uh, my question is, I, to me, it doesn't really matter 50%, 100%, 75%. We just want to get the, the road paved. You know, it's been how many administrations of, of DPWs that we've had. For, Phil and Rosalie lived here for 40 years. And you know, we just want a decent road. Right now it's got potholes, rocks, uh, it's you know, washboardy. It's, um, to your point, Mr. Frisco, it's not every time it rains. It's maybe once or twice a year we get stuff delivered, put down. Really, it just puts more rocks on the road. So, you know, there's, there's car damage, there's dust everywhere. We just need it paved. And I, don't, I don't, really don't know the process and as far as being a resident is concerned, yeah, great. You know, have it be 50%, have it be 100%. Doesn't it doesn't really matter? We just want to get the get the job done and and uh, have a have a decent road. It's a it's a the only part of this road. It's about a mile from the um, uh, uh, cul-de-sac where all the mailboxes are uh, to the end of the road. About a one mile, half of it's paved. No one lives on that section at all. <laughs> it's just you know town forest. So you go, and it, it's been repaved. So it's nice, it's beautiful, it's a nice road. But you get to where all the people live, and it's a mess. So anyway, save my case, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna go to Article 17. We'll come back to this one. Article 17 would appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. The article would provide additional funding for legal expenses related to the secondary school building project. The article proposes to appropriate $150,000 in free cash for continued legal action. Any discussion, any questions? We've already recommended sure. it. Yep, we oh, already made the recommendation, yep. Article 18 would authorize the Board of Selectmen to sell town-owned land located at 8 Devons Road via a request for proposals process rather than by auction to the highest bidder. Sorry. Any questions on Article 18? Any more discussion on the board? No, we've recommended it. Okay, we're good. Article 19 would authorize the Board of Selectmen to take steps to remove restrictions on an existing town water easement located at 100 Lowell Road. So board members, in case you're aware, the reason why this was requested, we're having an issue trying to get the easement, ish, uh, ish, yeah, the easement updated for the acquisition associated with the acquisition of 104 Lowell Road. We received news tonight that we, uh, that has been approved by the mortgage company. So I believe we will, pa I'm gonna make a recommendation to pass over this article. You like to wait? Wait till the evening town meeting. We'll wait, okay. I'm a fan of a document in hand. Okay, but hopefully by town meeting we'll have the document in hand, but we are notified. Yes. 
that has been signed. So do we want to change this to a recommendation to be made at town meeting? I would leave the recommendation as is. Just a question. Okay. Would this doesn't matter to me? Actually. Would this authorize the board uh, to take by eminent domain? It's not mentioned. Yes, it would. It could acquire by any means, per, any lawful means, including by right. eminent domain, which yep. the board already has the authority because it's for portable water purposes anyway. But so, yes. oh yeah, I, I just generally, I've seen the articles would include. Uh, I don't have my copy of the warrant. I believe it says that. But I believe it does. Sorry. But that's, they've already approved. Uh, right. No, they've yeah. approved it. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Yep, it's right in there. Good. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So we may revisit our recommendation at, on uh, a town meeting. Hope so. Any other, that's it on the articles, any more discussion, any more questions from the public? If I don't hear any, I'd like to close the public hearing on this. Quickly go over uh, the assignments that I'd like to make recommendations uh, for assignments, rather than spend a lot of time on it. So articles one, two, and three, I'd like Mrs. Minupelli to do. Articles four, five, and six, Mr. Masseri. Articles 7, 8, and 9, I would do. Articles 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, I would like Mr. O'Leary to do. And then the remaining articles, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Mr. Schultz. So it's 19 articles, it's roughly 3.8 articles a person. Um, the ones that Mr. O'Leary has are all related to the water, so I thought he'd be the appropriate person, with obviously Mr. Masseri to support him. If anybody has any objection, let me know. If not, I'd like to try to move on to the uh, approved board meeting selectman 2017 and beyond strategic plan. Okay. Good. Did you capture all that, Mike? Do you need me to email it to you? Uh, I'd like to just discuss this. We're gonna we're gonna bring something up on the strategic plan. I'm gonna go through it real quick. You skipped over the warrant articles, or are we going back to them? I'm I'm sorry, not the warrant articles. The uh, minutes. Yeah, we we'll come back to those. Okay. Because we don't get to them tonight, we'll just get to them at our next meeting. Not a priority, right? That we have to get those approved tonight. The minutes. No. No problem. Go right ahead. Um, while you're grabbing that, I just want to talk to the board members about uh, the suggested change associated with the time clock. Okay. This is Rourke in the room. So I know most of you are aware that the way we do time clocks, our managing our time cards today is very outdated. It's a paper process. It's labor intensive to review them, add them up, and then have supervisors go through it, add them up, go through it, another layer of administration to go through them and check them. So in the strategic plan under the technology, I'd like the board to consider a sub bullet for FY19 to appropriate the funding they need to get the MUNIS module to execute the electronic time card system. Something that we should have probably done a long time ago. But I want us to specifically capture in our strategic plan, so uh, we, we make it public to the book to the community that we're going to go to this, and I think it will help us with some of our CBA discussions as well. That everybody sees that this is the direction we want to go in as a board. That's my recommendation. It's purely up to you whether or not you want to integrate that into our strategic plan this evening before we make a final vote on it. Any questions, or thoughts, or discussion? Do we have an estimate of what the MUNIS system, that module costs at this point? So we have the capability currently with the modules that we have within MUNIS to do time entry, which would replace the paper timesheets that non-union employees um, use. 
um, and as well as some other unions um, use this, the same timesheet format. However, we would need um, funds for implementation for that module. So the module exists already, it's just not being utilized, and we would need um, consulting funds to implement that module. What, what about hardware for reading the uh, time cards or whatever, or electronic input? So Is it right, going to be direct electronic input? It, it's direct electronic input, okay. so we would have to evaluate the hardware needs of departments um, that may not have a, a workstation per employee. Mm -hmm. Most of the departments do, um, you know, potentially maybe the library doesn't. Uh, we'd have to evaluate that. Um, like a DPW bond? What about in that situation? Well, the DPW already has in their budget for a time clock to replace the current time clock that exists down there. And that time clock would be electronic and it would automatically up upload into Munis. So they would not be part of this time entry within Munis. So the module within Munis that this time entry um, is in is employee self-service, which we implemented maybe three or four years ago for um, the emailing of direct deposit advices and how employees also change their W-4s so we do already have the module, it would just be for implementation. So, Michael. Go right ahead, Mr. Michael. So I, I have a fairly, one of my customers, a fairly large facility, and they take time both from the computer where people have desktop computers, they can enter their time, and then in the, uh, in the uh, warehouse and uh, in several other locations that they have, they actually have an electronic time reader mm -hmm. that those employees can put their time in. Correct. And that would be similar to what we're going to I do, was gonna say it do down at DPW. DPW <clears throat> would, you know, punch in um, similar to the warehouse that you're speaking of. And mm -hmm. then if I was coming in for the day, I would log into my computer and punch in. Um, if I was off site and I was starting a meeting somewhere, I could do it from my phone, mm -hmm. I could do it from yeah. an iPad, you, you can do it wherever you have access to um, employee self-service. Okay. And employee self-service sits on its own server. Um, if you go to the town's website, it's actually at the bottom of the page, it's for employees and it, it, it links you to yeah. the website. So It's a secure website. So Michael, I have no problem adding that. Uh, As a sub -bull bullet under um, technology, if we can maybe sh pull up that slide. Down here where we have the uh, permitting and record retention access, oh, here on the left, um, almost down to the bottom, there you yeah. go. Adding a sub bullet in there. If uh, any, Mr. O'Leary, any objection or concern? No, I just have a, a question as far as how it's currently being implemented. Does it give them real time as far as what they have a vacation, or, or, you know, earn time vacation, uh, sick leave, personal time, what they have in the books? So that would be another step. That's a separate, that would be another step in the process of impl implementation. Um, we would have to add the accrual uh, piece to that. When the town purchased the payroll module of Munis, that was available then. It was not implemented. That was prior to my arrival. So that is something that would have to be implemented as well. Okay, because uh, again, when, before I retired, uh, I went from a paper timesheet that was submitted on a weekly basis mm -hmm. and then a separate one for expenses, time fees expenses, uh, to you know, electronically, <laughs> we just did it you know, weekly. And again, you can see real time, you know, right. when you put in, you know, eight hours vacation, mm -hmm. it's subtracted from your vacation time, right. you can see it right there. And that, uh, that would take place. Right. And then the, the only, uh, say, safeguards that were in place is that, you know, certain managers had responsibility for okaying it. Mm -hmm. In other words, the employee puts it in, but then someone has to okay it. And it wasn't just anybody at the payroll or the comptrollers or whatever else. It was an immediate supervisor who yeah. knew where you were or what you were supposed to be doing. And, uh, that would be and the same thing here. Okay. Um, there would be a workflow that would be set up, whether it would be, you know, the department, uh, the department head or their direct um, manager. Mm -hmm. They would have to approve it before it made its way over to payroll every week. Right. Uh, and again, the transition, and again, I lived through the transition, uh, it was a little rocky at first, mm -hmm. but it, it, it didn't take, you know, 
probably four to six weeks and everybody was acclimated to it and um, you just get used to doing it so mm -hmm. uh, it, it is not a it, it's it, not no, a difficult it, process it's just getting no, it, everybody it, trained it wasn't uh, it wasn't anything that had to be negotiated from a collective bargaining standpoint either it was just you know it was rolled out lots of notice adequate training up front this is how you're going to report your time now and uh, you know, the accrual is something that we've been working on yeah. from a collective bargaining standpoint, but it it's right there in front of the employee. They know any day of the week, any time of day, mm -hmm. what they have for earned time and what's on the books. Well, the current process is very labor intense, as I, uh, intensive. I got a, a little overview of it today, and I just thought this would be a perfect opportunity for us to integrate it into our objectives and under technology. And, and you know, we've been talking about it forever, too. So we have it partially implemented now? So we have, we utilize or underutilize um, employee self-service. Um, it has the ability to request time off, to enter, to, you know, enter your timesheet. Um, there's, there's a whole slew of things. You can change your benefits through it. Um, right. So we are not fully utilizing it. Um, and one of the reasons was due to the fact that we never implemented the accruals we could have implemented the accruals even prior to employee self-service. Um, from what I understand during the first MUNIS implementation here was that uh, the contracts, the employment contracts are very cumbersome and you need to have them all entered in order for the accruals to wor work properly. So that will be the biggest challenge. The timesheet replacement, you know, won't take that long to implement. It will be getting the accruals on everybody's paychecks, um, you know, working properly. And this still will provide them also the opportunity to go back and look at their previous pay paychecks and that will not go away. W two right. That's okay. still that will still stay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the time, you know, it we would just be having you enter it into the computer versus entering it onto um, an Excel spreadsheet and printing it out and then bringing it to payroll. So you wouldn't, you know, right. be using wasting paper. You would just enter it right into the computer. Mr. Yeah. Um it, Do you right now do the calculations by hand on accruals for employees? Is we it have a spreadsheet for every employee. Uh, Which you mean you only have to input the number? Yes. So, so we take we take the paper timesheet, and if you took one vacation day this week, we charge one vacation day for you and that explains why you're here when we're all <laughs> gone and you go back to your office at 11 or 12 o'clock night so this will computerize that and free up a lot of time for people to direct it to other things yes and then my second question to you is right now I would think or envision it like when you send us the budget or the payroll to review every week mm -hmm that you would have the manager signing off electronically like you do with, with us? Yes, that would be part of the workflow and approval process. Um, so I would enter my time and um, the town administrator would approve my time for, for that week. Um, and then I would approve my staff's time. You know, Andrew Lafferty would approve, approve um, his non-union employee's time as well as his clerical union employee's time. And then the time clock from the DPW garage would, you know, um, flow within Munis as well, so. Mm -hmm. And just one more question. Do you have an idea of how much the cost would be to implement this? I don't um, anticipate it being large. Like I said, um, it, for the most part, I understand how everything needs to operate, but I am only one person, so we would need to have some outside help, whether it's from Munis or from, you know, an outside consultant. So I, I would assume, you know, I would say $25,000. So when we go through the budget this year, for the next year, hopefully we'll have that information as you get your presentations. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you. Are you staying for this? Is there anything else we I'm need to I'm staying for executive session. Okay. Well, we're going to try to get through this very quickly so we don't keep you here all the same. Um, I want to, again, thank the board for meeting and having an extra meeting to update our strategic plan. We do it annually, and I thought it was a very uh, good meeting. I think we got a lot done. So you can go right to the objectives if you, I'd like to, or I'm sorry, go back to the um, program progress assessment. I'd like to start there if we could. 
Next slide. So we've added a few things. Uh, we started out with last year trying to try to find a way to find uses for the reuse for the JT Berry properties. I think we've done a great job on that so far. We still have one parcel remaining that we have to go back out for an RFP on. But as you can see here, we've updated the progress assessment to show our progress with the potential sale uh, to Pulte Homes for the 30 acres, uh, roughly 30 acres. Right now, we're on pace to do our closing. We're gonna try to meet next week or the week after to try to come up with a final schedule on that closing. We're hoping to do it by the end of November. We'll take our final closing on that property. That's our ultimate goal. That would stay within the timeline that we have under the sale partnership model to get the additional 5% selling the property for a total of 10% extra in the uh, split. The other uh, addition that we see here from the past years was the establishment of the partially self-funded health insurance module. Um, that's the participating Is that the participating funding agreement? Yes. Okay. And uh, <coughs> let's see, the last one is to secure the funding for the MWRA water resource, which we've accomplished. And now we go to our objective slide. You can see the change here. We're just as the recent news, we're going to try as an objective now to secure funding for Andover Portable Water Solution. And the, one of the first steps is at this October town meeting to start that step. And as Mr. O'Leary highlighted earlier this evening, it's a parallel path until we get to October, I mean, until we get to April. So we have a lot of work to continue on that. And I want to thank Mr. Masiri and Mr. O'Leary again for all the time and effort they put into this. The slight change to complete the FEIR, we've moved that out now to 2018, where I believe it was 2017 last time we presented this. Again, I'm just touching upon the changes from our meeting, I develop a plan for the reuse of the sale of the sale proceeds for the JT Berry property. Once we complete the sale with Pulte Homes, that is something we as a board have to work on in 2018. And then determine the vision for the town's future identity. It's uh, something we spent a little bit of time on and that's we will follow up in future board meetings as we discuss that. We did change, uh, you see the animal control officer associated with teaming with surrounding towns. We did explore that, the town administrator and his staff spent uh, an enormous amount of time vetting that option. Didn't quite work out, but we're not gonna give up on always exploring opportunities for sharing resources with our surrounding neighbors. Uh, and potentially the veteran services is still on the table and being discussed. We have a one article associated with our feasibility where you, as we improve town buildings, we want to focus heavily on our town hall potential replacement and our fire station relocation and replacement as part of that feasibility study. So it's on our objectives. And we have the town meeting warrants that coincide with that. Affordable housing, plan development ongoing, and it's something we're going to spend more time with as we go along. And transportation, we've now got the uh, MVRTA, and we're hopefully going to be rolling that out here soon. And we're going to continue to explore other options for uh, improved enhancements of other transportation, something the board's fully committed on doing. And I think that's it. Uh, unless the board wanted to go through any of the strengths or anything, but I just wanted to really just touch upon that and then maybe take a vote this evening to approve this plan. We'll have the town administrator go up, make the final uh, administrative changes to this, and then get it posted on our website. And have an opportunity to brief the department heads as they start to prepare their FY19 budgets. Mr. Any? Chairman, just a note for the record, the agenda <coughs> and the motion st uh, state so Order Selectman 2017 and beyond strategic plan, it is in fact the 2018 and beyond strategic plan. Please forgive us for the error in the posting and the language. An agenda typo. Script is it. Yeah. <laughs>
So you wait, uh, you're waiting for a motion? I am. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the Board of Selectmen 2018 and beyond strategic no. plan. Um, So we have a motion to approve the 2018 and beyond strategic plan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Misery. Any more discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Thank you for the meal. Oh, my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I did. I do apologize for I the mean, cookies. You know, I'd probably go to more meetings really if good. I were fed. <laughs> well. We can make that happen. Yeah. But again, thank you for being committed to this. I think having a strategic plan is very good. As the board makes change, we have a new member. I think it's helpful for him in his first year to really have an idea of where we're going and keeps us on a path going forward. And uh, so I'm, I'm really bought in on this and I appreciate your commitment to it. So I have the motion, I have a second, no more discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, one absent. Thank you. Okay. Brings us to the town administrator's report. We have the. Going to skip over the minutes? Yes, we're going to do the minutes. We'll, we'll do those another day. Oh. We're going to take because I don't want to keep Mrs. Rourke here all evening, and um, it's not a priority item. I want to get back to executive session. We could so we'll allow the town administrator to go through his reports. We'll do a quick old and new business, and we'll enter back into executive session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, hydrant flushing is scheduled to begin this week and it's expected to continue until late October. As I've noted previously, I encourage the public to visit the town website for more information. A town employee appreciation luncheon is scheduled for Friday, October 13th from 12 o'clock noon to 1.30 p.m. at Hillview Country Club. On this day, town hall will close for the day at 12 o'clock noon. The public library will close from 12 noon until 1.30. Please see the attached invitation, and the board members are encouraged to attend if available that day. As I mentioned previously, planning efforts are underway for the procurement of solid waste collection and disposal contracts. We expect to brief and request feedback from the board on the collection methods on October 16th. In the interim, DPW has participated in a collaborative procurement for disposal locations, and based on that procurement, recommends Covanta continue to be our disposal location. I intend to sign an extension with Covanta for solid waste disposal by September 21st. There's a detailed report from the Public Works Corp Director that I included with my report. After a recent employee resignation from the town's Federal Youth Substance Abuse Grant Program, the Police Chief, Human Resources Director, and I intend to modify the administration of the grant program to better meet the town's needs. A new structure is attached along with the current structure and we do believe that we have a qualified internal candidate familiar with the grant program to take on the responsibilities of grant program oversight under the reorganized structure. In accordance with the most recent collective bargaining agreement with the DPW union, we are procuring new uniforms for DPW staff this month. Human Resources is also running a trial polo shirt polo t-shirt program with DPW buildings and grounds, information technology, and the Human Resources Department, which has been met with positive feedback. And finally, we welcome the Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles to the AAA Member Services Center at RK Plaza. AAA and the RMV hosted a ribbon cutting on September 14th. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prisco just had to step up for a minute, but does anybody have any questions of the TA? So we're moving on to personal privilege. Oh. Mr. O'Leary. Well, the new business, I just want to uh, mention the passing of former employee, uh, Ginny Fitzmeyer, or Virginia Fit Fitzmeyer, more affectionately known as Ginny, who worked in the DPW uh, department for about 20 years, um, longtime resident of the community, uh, good friend and neighbor, all the people up on Anthony and Peter Road, and, uh, and a wonderful room mother in my fourth grade class. And uh, terrific lady, uh, always a smile, it's a terrific asset to the community. Uh, when she worked for us and uh, we mourn her loss and we'll miss her. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Mossieri. Uh, just an update on uh, the Cable Advisory Committee and their discussions and negotiations with uh, Comcast. And, uh, you know, from the board 
side, and there's a significant issue associated with the uh, Comcast saying that uh, they're going to terminate our use of IT or data transfer over the INET. So uh, if beat goes on, Comcast has admitted that uh, they would probably extend it for a year to give us an opportunity to make the changes that would be necessary. Uh, input from council suggests that it's within their rights, so it's not something that we're going to, a battle that we're going to win, although we'll continue to fight. Uh, I have a meeting scheduled with IT here on Wednesday to talk about and come up with uh, specific approaches, options to continue to have connectivity between our buildings, which is critical for all the users of uh, data transfer between the buildings. And that would include the time clocks. Uh, and uh, the objective there is to come up with the options and come up with the cost associated with that and then see what we can do in the negotiations with Comcast to help absorb some of that cost, if at all possible. So, What's the drop dead date? Uh, we have to have this. Maybe Michael can answer that better than me. I, think. I know so you said a year, but a year from. So we're I think it's January. It, the new contract goes into place January 1st. That's correct. My understanding. The, the local franchise agreement this that we have. Coming January? This coming January. Yeah. So every year from then. Under the scenario being proposed yes which they have been put in writing but it was hinted and then uh, Verizon comes on board their contract renews in six months later so, probably July so 1st a, so there is a there's a small chance that that could actually get shut off in January I, I don't think that's gonna happen I think they'll work with us they'll okay. work with us All right. won't get along you know, we've made the point. Well, we should, we should we made the point. We're in. You know, <laughs> we should we're be alarmed. We should be upset. We're on a fiscal year, you know, and. Um, uh, do we need to ask them to come here? So with us, no. At some point, maybe. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Thank you. On that. Anything else? Oh, Mr. O'Leary, you want to just no, I, I, no, I had I had one more thing that I I said I was done, but I'm not. Uh, Go but right. Just as far as the athletics uh, facility subcommittee and the um, new facilities, bathroom facilities at Arthur Kenny Field. Uh, things are moving along. Uh, we've had some good meetings with the uh, contractors and the uh, individual who are going to be providing the, the structure. Uh, they're going to be setting up the fencing uh, this week and they anticipate uh, getting underway, I think starting the 25th or something around there, as far as uh, doing the, the site work. And they should have all the infrastructure in as far as the foundation and infrastructure by the end of October. And the new facility that's going to be delivered hopefully by the end of January, but it'll, everything will be in by March, mid-March. So things are looking good. It's great. And all the teams and leagues and everything have been notified Everybody's about Everybody's been notified. Concession it's, uh, stand. Logistics have been worked out. Beautiful. And, uh, Marty Tilton's done a good job of uh, facilitating all of that. And everybody's... Uh, Doing a good job meeting regularly. We're going to have regular meetings, update during the construction phase. So if anything comes up, we'll know on a very timely basis. So. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Masseri, are you all set? I'm all set. Thank you, Kate, for taking over from me. I had to run out for a second. Go ahead. Happy birthday to my brilliant daughter, Kay. Hey. Brilliant and beautiful daughter, Kay. <laughs> Happy birthday. I hope you have an amazing year. I know she's up watching, right? Taking I notes. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> she has her friends call me about town questions for their homework. So I know the school curriculum involves, you know, civic, civic oh, questions and things. And which leads me to thank you for the dinner, the strategic oh, planning. Boy. And just remind everybody out there, there's a form on the back page of this warrant. Come and join us as volunteers to help out the town, participate civic in, uh, well, just tell us what you want to do and there's plenty of availability for volunteers. 
Thank you. I don't have anything this evening, so if uh, we're good, I'd like to take a motion to enter back into executive session, and, and including the finance director. Sure. And Mr. Chairman, I move to enter back into executive session for the purposes of exemption three collective bargaining strategy litigation and exemption six real estate. Such discussions in open session will have a detrimental impact on the town and to admit finance director and town administrator. And we will no, no. Go enter into open uh, open session for adjournment. For okay, all right. So we'll, we will return to open session for purposes of adjournment. Second. Second by Mr. Masseri. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Masseri. Aye. Mr. Manupelli. Aye. And the chair's aye. Thank you. <laughs>